Communication Research Preventing Plagiarism Introduction Hello everyone, welcome to your lecture on Preventing Plagiarism. This lecture is a part of your paper on Communication Research. We all know that in any kind of research, it is an academic offense to pass off someone's idea, thought, content, pictures or any other form of information or facts present in any medium without properly crediting or acknowledging the original proponent. Plagiarism means exactly that, republishing another person's words, ideas, thoughts, findings and any other sort of copyrighted information and presenting the same as one's own without proper credit amounts to plagiarism. The precise definition of the term plagiarism is, plagiarism is an act of not crediting the original creator of content, idea, thought, illustrations and other forms of information or knowledge used in your study. It is actually a practice of claiming credit for someone else's work. The edicts of plagiarism cover text, graphics and other visuals from all the old and new forms of publication like World Wide Web. Work plagiarized from the internet is mostly termed as cyber plagiarism. In this era of the information superhighway, anyone can copy any sort of information and present it as her own. Besides its enormous benefits, social media is one sense has been promoting plagiarism. The distribution and redistribution of one's content or idea on the internet in general and social media in particular has reduced the credibility of the information. Plagiarism is considered both an illegal and punishable offence. It raises questions regarding one's credibility, integrity and trustworthiness of both the research and researcher. Plagiarism is a form of research misconduct which brings the whole research into the question. Many young researchers have few misconceptions about the concept of plagiarism. They are mostly found to have been of the opinion that plagiarism is only an act of using someone else's work in its original form or actual words. However, it is the half-truth. Thus, it is very important to discern what counts as plagiarism. But before that, let us look at the types of plagiarism. Intentional and unintentional plagiarism. Plagiarism may be either intentional or unintentional. Some people intentionally use someone else's content or idea without properly crediting the original source of information. Intentional plagiarism is clearly an act of copying any sort of information present in any form without giving any credit to the original author or creator. On the other hand, in the unintentional plagiarism, the author actually unknowingly uses others' work without proper credit. This may include the paraphrased and fragmented text the author has pieced together from several works without properly citing the original source. Inaccurate citation, poor paraphrasing 
and quoting poorly may result in unintentional plagiarism. Without reshaping the original sequence of the sentence, the researchers change only some words. As researchers normally seek information from ample sources, they mostly end up mixing them with their own background knowledge. Although the later form of plagiarism occurs mostly due to the laziness of the researcher. However, both the forms of plagiarism are considered unethical by the scientific community. Types of plagiarism On the basis of nature of work used without crediting the original author, plagiarism may be broadly categorized into three groups. Content plagiarism Thought plagiarism Self-plagiarism Now, let us look at types of plagiarism specifically. 1. Content plagiarism Without citing the original author or creator of the content, using another person's exact words is called content plagiarism or plagiarism of text or words. It is actually an act of presenting another person's actual or paraphrased written or oral words as your own. Besides words, content plagiarism may also include copying someone else's sentence structure with no proper citation. 2. Thought plagiarism Using one's idea, opinion, theory without properly crediting the original thinker or theoretician is called thought plagiarism. It is an act of presenting the ideas of another person as your own. Apart from words and sentence structure, idea and opinion of another person must also be credited properly. 3. Self-plagiarism This type of plagiarism is usually overlooked but is very important. Exactly copying or republishing one's own work is called self-plagiarism. In simple words, self-plagiarism is to reuse a significant amount of author's own published work without properly mentioning the oldness of the work. According to Roig 2015, authors attempt to reuse their previous work in a new product without telling the reader no that this material has appeared previously results in self-plagiarism. The fact of the matter is that we can't use our own material without proper credit and also because the findings or the material have been revealed in public already. According to Scanlon 2007, self-plagiarism is a form of academic fraud. Self-plagiarism is increasingly a vexed act of scholarly misconduct. According to American Psychological Association 2010, self-plagiarism is a different form of plagiarism in a sense that it is a practice of presenting one's own previously published work as though it were new. For example, you are publishing a new research paper. In the paper, you are using findings of your earlier research. Even though the findings are your own, you still need to properly cite the previous research paper. Otherwise, it would qualify for self-plagiarism. The citation would also help though let the reader know that the findings are not new and have been revealed earlier. What qualifies as plagiarism? Now, let us do a quick recap on what qualifies as plagiarism so we can remember it easily. 1. Using another person's actual written or oral words without proper citation. 2. Presenting someone else's work as your own. 3. Using another person's paraphrased written or oral words without proper citation. 
4. Using one's own actual written or oral words without proper citation. 5. Using one's own paraphrased written or oral words without proper citation. 6. Using another person's idea, opinion, theory, statistics, illustrated material or other visual information without proper citation. 7. Publishing elements of your previous article with credit may also qualify for self-plagiarism if the author doesn't clearly differentiate original work from previously published work. 8. Using copyright material without proper citation. 9. It's the responsibility of the author to ensure that the article or research paper sent for publication by her is not plagiarized. 10. Resubmitting your article to another journal for publication with some minor changes or under different titles also qualifies for self-plagiarism. 11. Lifting considerable amount of material from any website without permission or citing web host or original author. Avoiding plagiarism. Now that we have understood what counts as plagiarism, let us discuss the measures of how can one avoid it. According to Marsh, be it deliberate or unintentional, the acts of plagiarism and textual misappropriation in the world of academics often invites severe penalties, similar to those imposed in the cases of copyright violations. Thus, the need to avoid indulging in the act. In order to prevent plagiarism, researchers across India can take few precautions during the writing and editing process, such as 1. All the ideas and information that is not your own must be properly quoted and cited. According to Indiana University, researchers should cite the original source if he or she borrows facts, statistics or both illustrative material unless the information is common knowledge. 2. You need not cite commonly known facts or knowledge. For example, you came to learn from some book that Nehru was the first Prime Minister of India. You can use this fact without citing the author of the book. If you are using someone's actual words, use double quotation marks and to the citation. Both the quotation marks and the reference are important in the case of direct quote. Quotation marks alone or the reference alone is not enough in such cases. 4. Use in text citations. In text attribution can be done in three ways. A. Direct quotes. Using the actual words used by another researcher. Use quotation marks, name the author and include year and page number of publication. B. Paraphrasing. Use different words from the original and name the author and include the year of publication. C. Summarizing. Give the essence of the author's ideas and name the author and include the year of publication. 5. A reference list must be included at the end of the text of each research paper. This list must be in a citation style that is accepted in your academic department. Communications researchers normally use the APA style of citation. An APA reference list entry books like this.
Marsh B. 2007, Plagiarism, Alchemy and Remedy in Higher Education, Albany, New York State University of New York Press. There are plenty of resources online that will help you to create your reference list in the citation style that you require, like easybib.org, bibme.org, and citationmachine.net. While downloading or saving material from the internet or other sources, the researcher should make sure that complete information regarding the sources of the information is available. The researcher should note the source or complete reference of the document immediately. Documents with no information or incomplete about or the author, publisher, etc. should not be included in the study. The researchers must understand the basics of intellectual property rights IPR, and the guidelines of copyright law. 7. The researcher must seek the permission for using the material from website host or original author if a considerable amount of work is used from a web. 8. Keep all the research notes and research drafts in separate files. This will help you to keep a check of the sources used after the completion of the draft. 9. Even though there is no any specific amount of text that falls under the fair use guidelines of the copyright law, authors can use portions of others' work with proper citations. 10. As per Chicago Manual of Style 2010 is, one should never quote more than a few continuous paragraphs or stanzas at a time or let the quotations, even scattered, begin to overshadow the quoter's own material. In the case of longer sentences, block quotations are the safe alternative for avoiding the plagiarism. Block quotation contain a direct quote in a smaller font size as compared to the main body text. Block quotation starts in a new line with some intent and separates borrowed text from the main body of text. As per American Psychological Association Style Guide, 6th edition, Block quotation should start in a new line and indent a half inch from the side margins. According to these guidelines, there is no need to use quotation marks. 11. In case researchers use some previous data, they should clearly mention the nature of dissemination of this previous data used in the new manuscript. 12. The researcher must refrain from dividing the result of a single study into various papers. That is, authors should desist from publishing a new study or paper after mixing the old data with some additional information. 13. Self-plagiarism or text recycling, even though acceptable at some instances, may not be considered ethical at any cost. According to American Psychological Association, 2010, at many occasions, the researcher needs to duplicate her own words documented in the earlier study and suggests using the phrase, as I have previously discussed. 14. Use plagiarism software to detect the similarity of the content and further reduce the plagiarism. Various important plagiarism softwares like Authenticate, Turnitin, Crosscheck, etc. are available currently.
15. Even though you can further expand a topic based on the previous literature, the latest work should be original. 16. You can depend on expert opinions, but you should give an utmost importance to improve upon those opinions. In order to understand plagiarism properly, the researcher should first understand the concept of authorship. It means production and ownership of ideas and intellectual property material by the original author. 17. The researchers must follow a single standard referencing system like APA, MLA, Chicago in every single publication. Following more than one referencing system in a single publication may lead to confusion. 18. Apart from these ethical and legal issues, the researchers must abide by these rules and regulations to uphold their professionalism, integrity, credibility and reputation. 19. Record full citation, author, title, date etc. for each of your sources. Refrain from giving incomplete credit. It is the responsibility of the author to make sure that reader gets to know about all the borrowed content or idea. 20. Make sure that reference cited leads to the correct source of information used in the study. Provide all the references at the end of the research in a separate chapter. Problems in India Now let us focus on the Indian scenario. No one condones plagiarism and so almost all the government and some private universities in India have installed software to check for plagiarism. One of the most reported problems here is that there is no clarity on what amount of similarity in the documents actually could be termed as significant. There is a great disparity over this among different departments of the universities and among different universities. Apart from that, even though Indian universities have been going through a plagiarism check in case of PhD and MPhil thesis and dissertations, the same is not undertaken at the masters and undergraduate level. To prevent plagiarism, there is an urgent need for the formulation of a common policy regarding the significant levels of plagiarized similarities in the research documents. This policy of checking the plagiarism through software should also be uniformly applied to all academic projects and reports as well. Conclusion Thus, in this lecture, we have learnt various aspects of the plagiarism. I hope you understand the difference between intentional and unintentional plagiarism as well as the various types of plagiarism. I hope that this list of do's and don'ts to avoid plagiarism will be helpful in your research endeavours. For more details, please read the module on this lecture carefully and attempt the questions in the end. Thank you.